In January of 1954, the Battle of the Bulb was still extremely fresh, with Averignian forces fortifying their position with trenches and gunner nests, while the Pact of Rome pressed in from all sides, even hauling in mortar squads, since stationary artillery was still too vulnerable to air attacks. The air battle was extremely fraught, with new aces being born and dying every week. In short, things were slow, but brutal. Later that month, with Averignian might preoccupied in Trebalia, Italia launched a naval invasion of Sicilia and the North African coast, succeeding to break ground in both instances, using Sicilia as the base of operations for the North Africa campaign against Averignia, hoping to divide their attention even further, and hopefully assault the Bulb from behind their own positions. The rest of the world didn't put its own affairs on hold for the war, however. In February of 1954, the remnants of Sahel Shield launched a counterattack against Kilwa, with the aim of pushing them back into sub-Saharan territory and, if possible, killing Mapira Maluzzi. The initial stages of this seemed to be a wild success, as it seemed Kilwa was only prepared to attack, not defend, given that it didn't bother setting up major forts along the Sahel. That same month, Lai Zhou also made further gains against Averignia in the Averignian chinese west African Colonial War. In May of 1954, Phrygia finally buckled under the weight of its own social engineering. It all began with a case in the capital city of Bursa, where five migrant men were moved into the home of a young family of three. Some domestic altercation about water rationing soon unfolded, leading to one of the migrant men striking the father with a chunk of broken sink porcelain, cracking his skull open and killing him instantly. In a panic, the mother and child attempted to escape, which is when the murderer and two other men grabbed them and tossed them off the roof into the adjoining alleyway, where the two were killed on impact. The neighbors, hearing the commotion, went to check on them, only to find the bodies in the alleyway. The neighbors stormed the building, tearing the doors off their hinges, beating them to death with stones and loose pipes. The Phrygian Red Army soon arrived, which is when the neighbors began to rain garbage and rocks down upon them. In response, they locked the neighbors inside and set the house aflame, resulting in the deaths of 23 Phrygian men and 10 Phrygian women. The rest of the neighborhood erupted into fury, pouring out onto the streets and overwhelming the detachment sent to quell them taking their guns and other armaments, sparking a rebellion which began to spread through the city of Bursa like wildfire, beginning the Bursa Rebellion. With legions of native Phrygians rising up in their millions against the Velocifist government and against the roughly five million interlopers that Dr. Laurania had welcomed into his revolutionary state, he attempted to flee the country with his bodyguards and free love harem, now consisting of 40 women between the ages of 14 and 60. Unfortunately for him, a border guard and regional commander of the Phrygian Red Army, Orion Dracos, decided to apprehend him, killing his bodyguards in a speedy altercation. The women were sent away to a local communal house, and Dracos dragged Laurania to the capital of Bursa, starving and beating him along the way, tying his hands to an armored vehicle and dragging him through the morning, slapping him and shooting towards him at night to keep him awake, and sometimes plunging shots of adrenaline into his heart when he did manage to get to sleep. So, when Commander Dracos and his army arrived to Bursa, instead of aiding the rest of the Red Army in putting down the revolt, he dragged a delirious and emaciated Larinia before the crowd, filthy and already on the verge of death, and gave a short speech. I deliver this wretch to you, the people who have been forgotten by the revolution, and sentence him to death by your hands. Do what you will. By the gods, I will make Phrygia a nation again. And so he shoved the wicked doctor before them, practically throwing him into the crowd. Laurania had taken everything from them, and now he lay at their mercy. He was soon swallowed up by the crowd, and as his piercing shrieks erupted from his broken jaw, he soon fell silent. After 15 minutes of brutalizing, a lone wooden pole was hoisted up from among them, with what was left of Laurania tied to it with ropes, stained with blood and bone. This gnarled corpse was the banner of the counter-revolution, and one side of the Second Phrygian Civil War. 
Meanwhile, Sahel Shield, armed with guns and equipment from the Desert Greeks, had made even more gains against Kilwa that same month, leading to widespread riots across the country. In June, the Kingdom of Zarathurma, under Rex Orfe II and Echidus de Ostum, finally captured the Panama Canal and immediately began fortifying it, making preparations for its return to the world stage as an international trading hub. In response, Free Zarathurma began to double down on its efforts to not only recapture, but totally destroy the Panama Canal. By November of 1954, the Chinese powers erupted into chaos yet again, as Lai Zhou initiated a unilateral takeover of the Shaoxian puppet state without the permission of the rest of the Sashi League. This triggered Po Yang to launch their own invasion, and Nam Ning to enter the fray as well. The fighting eventually caused the three groups to fire on each other, perhaps accidentally, but it did lead to the dissolution of the Sashi League, partition of Xiaojin, and triggered the Great Chinese War, which soon enough became a war for the outright dominance of the entire region. On January 1st, 1955, 377 days after the start of the Battle of the Bulb, Averignian fighters managed to gain air superiority, and carried out ruthless strikes against the Pact of Rome and its defensive positions surrounding the battle, leading to a general collapse of the enemy front, and by the end of the week, Tribalia surrendered, pushing the front line all the way back to Burgundia. However, instead of annexing Tribalia, as many expected, some land was taken from them and a client state was instead established from the rest, called the Tribalian Authority, a Pazzi military government of its very own, with its very own version of the Zikne Raznea that placed Tribalians in the top rank. Averignia made it known that it was not building an empire, but establishing a nationalist confederation across the whole of Europe, where each people will have their fatherland. Membership in this new confederation of the blood was available to any who threw down their arms and joined them. Meanwhile, those who continued to resist would be subjugated, annexed into Greater Everignia. This policy was called the Kuthtruna Option, and it was enticing indeed, to the point where a civil war broke out in Burgundia over whether or not to take the deal. The rebel faction spawned from industrial workers who were at present being pushed to the brink of death producing heavy armor and munitions for the war effort. The rest of the Pact of Rome lurched at this turn of events as they cracked down on their labor pools and established a secret police force called the Widentes to seize and cart off suspected malcontents. In Italia, meanwhile, morale for this war was actually at its highest, due in large part to a grassroots ideological movement called Redowatism, which styled itself as a neo-Roman, pan-nationalist movement advocating for the re-establishment of the Roman Empire and return of the imperial system. Italia didn't crack down on this, as those who subscribed to this ideology were the greatest asset the Pact had when it came to the containment war. Unlike the often haughty, bureaucratic system the Pact of Rome often came off as, people were willing to die for the idea of Rome, so they let them. Throughout 1955, this is exactly what happened, as Italia made sweeping progress in the North Africa campaign, while Burgundia fell to its rebels and became the Burgundian national state joining the Confederation of the Blood. Then, in February of 1956, the Wotansloa had a major breakthrough in their war against Britannia, finally smashing through their coastal defenses and invading from all sides, partitioning the Isles accordingly, throwing the Banner of the Raven over the Isles in a conquest that was centuries in the making. A great blot was held that day, as hundreds of Britannic soldiers were sacrificed to the Allfather. Meanwhile, later that month, Commander Orion Dracos won the Second Phrygian Civil War and brought the Bursa Rebellion to fruition, establishing himself as Supreme Commander Dracos over the military dictatorship of Phrygia, a place he declared forever free of ideology. He initiated a remigration program which would come to deport almost all surviving migrant groups, save for many Jews who had settled on the island of Cyprus and made themselves useful as skilled local merchants and craftsmen. He also initiated an architectural restoration campaign, attempting to salvage the religious sites that had anything left to salvage, and tearing down monuments to the Velocivist regime, especially statues of Laurania and shoddily constructed tenement blocks. By 1957, 
Trade began to flow through the Panama Canal for the first time in nearly 30 years, bolstered by the kingdom's vigorous defense of the isthmus from enemy ships. Overall, the world continues to be in flux, and the state of the future remains decidedly uncertain.